Hello guys, this is Mokibo here and this type of video will not really have an intro uh, to say, but this is the video of me just sadly evaluating myself. You know, it's these type of videos where you look back on life, your favorite moments, your worst moments, your eh moments, all those trends you went into, all those cultures you were curious about, and pretty much everything was in between. I'm going to explain my. You know, it's kind of selfish for me just to say like, oh yeah, that this happened, this happened, I did this, I did that, I had this happen to me, I had someone do this to me, yada 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 yada. But I'm just like taking the time just to relax, take a deep breath, and just let loose of what I have experienced. Not particularly from the moment I actually breathed, because that would be hours long to save explain that so pretty much what I'm gonna do is the major things you know all the times I've dated someone all the times I've ever had something happen to me all the times I've had influences or meetups by some people so let's begin when I was about hmm, four or five I think I remember correctly um, I had, I was abusive little shit. <laughs> I've always had this sort of mentality where anything that came into contact with me was either A, going to be hurt by me, or B, it was just going to be, you know, not going to accept me with their social views. You know, like being socially lonely and all that crap. Because, you know, everyone's experienced social loneliness. It's not exactly a new thing. Everyone has experienced at some point. Or when they're excluded from a group because of something that happened to them. And if you're wondering, I'm going to fumble on words, so I'm not going to have this edited because it's a point of doing that. It's about half an hour. <laughs> it's going to be half an hour long full of video game footage while I'm talking about this, so why not just keep it unedited? Now, when I was a piece of below shit back then, I didn't know what I was doing, really. I was just pretty much grabbing everything I can, hurting everything I can, making life hell for others. And it came back to me when I was a little bit older. My dog died in 2006. His name was Shadow. He was a beagle. He died of cancer, and he would always run away from me because I was really abusive to them, and I don't know why I did that. It's those times where you think, look, you look back, and you wonder why why did I do this why because if I hadn't been abusive he probably would have loved me a lot more but for some reason something in my brain was like attack him attack him attack him and all the crap I really what if I were to go back in time and find myself doing that I'd really spank myself because that was really dumb I mean dude I love the dog and if he were if I went back in time and that never happened Things might have been different. Might have. The cancer probably wouldn't have been preventable, but you know what I mean. Difference in relationships with animals. Like now, if I had a dog, I would love to think death. Not love it to death, but just, you know, kill it and all that crap. I just really don't know what I was thinking back then. Eh. <sighs> wow. I'm just looking back now, I was like, why? Why? Another instance when I was about, oh, uh, I don't know how old I was, but this was in the f uh, second grade, if I remember correctly, so the second grade or kindergarten, which one it was. There was this girl who would tease me non-stop, like, would get in my face, make me really agitated. Like, what? <laughs> it's cute when you see, it's cute when you see a kindergartner or a young kid agitated, because... They're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's quite funny, it's quite cute. But when I was angry and agitated, I just took a pencil and just dragged it over her forehead. I think it was, I don't think I gave her any lead poisoning, I don't think I did. But I was, I was suspended for quite a while, I had to publicly apologize, which frankly I would do, that's my kid if that ever happened. Um, and I just look at it, look at it now, I'm like, yeah, she was being a bit of a bitch, but I just snapped and didn't. I wasn't thinking. Simple enough. I was not thinking. That's the key word that's going to be in this little self-evaluation. I did not think. 
with the riding on the girl's forehead and animal abuse. Why did I do those things? I don't know. I suppose I should say I'm not exactly a 90s kid, even though I was born in 96. Did that classify as 90s kid? Hmm. Depends on what you think. And just to be clear, I am not religious in any way, so if any of you are disappointed that I'm not not believing in anything, then sorry, not gonna <laughs> not gonna bow to your views because you say, This is real, this is real, you are an asshole, believe in this. Because I won't. And the next person I see The next person I see that comes up to me and says, You must believe in this is gonna get either A the finger or B I'm just gonna walk away and they'll keep bothering me. Ugh nope. Not gonna happen near me. <laughs> Ow. Okay. What else happened in my life when I was I had to self-evaluate myself, so this is kind of difficult if I try to look back now. Uh I tried karate as a kid, cried like a bitch for because I it was never I was never yelled at and then until that time, so I wasn't really prepared for it. And if I were to go back now and actually go take karate again, I probably would actually have a better chance since I would actually know what the hell I was doing, learn, and not be a little shit in the corner crying. Because if I'm gonna be a parent and my kid starts crying, I'm not gonna go get them. That's how I was raised, that's how I was taught. Well, I don't have the mindset now if I'm, my kid was crying in a corner because it was too hard or especially yelling at me and she could be like, eh, leave him. And funny enough, the karate teacher, the sensei, she actually congratulated my mother for not taking me out. And frankly, I wouldn't do it either. <laughs> I have to learn the hard way, so if the hard way involves leaving your kid there to suffer and learn the consequences of his actions, hmm, or his or her actions, not exactly pointing to males, but females can do it too, and yeah, if I have a daughter that does that, yeah, life. So, what else happened in my life? I'm gonna solve evaluate on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think for a bit, so. Oh, yeah. The first time I watched pornography. <laughs> oh my god, this was like. About when I was 12. I was like. I was doing my stuff, like going on the internet. And then I found a pornographic picture. And then for some reason, that led me over to a pornography site. Watched my first video, and for some reason, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, ah, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's this? Because when you're a kid or a preteen, you gotta be curious about things. So I'm not blaming my, I'm not blaming myself for my curiosity. I'm blaming myself for even, you know, finding this picture. Like if this picture never came into my life, I probably would never even seen more. And my mind would be somewhat innocent. Somewhat, but you know, even if I didn't see pornography by then or by now, I know quite a bit about it. Considering how pornography is pretty much the majority of the internet now. If it exists, then there's going to be porn of it. That's pretty much just the, <laughs> that's the flat line or the bottom line when it comes to the internet. If it's on the internet, if it's well known, it's going to be turned to porn somehow. I don't know. I don't know how people come up with it or people come up with out of films, parading stuff like I saw Scooby Doo one that was really stupid. <laughs> how could you make stupid? How, how could you turn Scooby Doo, a classic cartoon that was out for years, decades, and then he turned it to an adult film parody? That's like a big middle finger to Scooby Doo fans. So, what else happened? Like, I could just go on about stuff that's happened in between, but. That's that would a not be interesting and b would just be like not exactly something you'd be interested in and I'd probably get bored of it and just switch off very quickly. So what else happened? Oh yeah, my emo stage. I was like when I was in grade seven, I think I started being emo. Why I don't know. It was a culture thing back then. And for some reason, people still do it now, which I wonder why. Like, when, there, when the emo thing came around in 1980, that's when things started to kick off for the emo culture. The emotional culture. Yes, I don't remember when it actually started. Uh, 
not for me, but the culture itself. I think it started in like 1980 something. I think it was either really at 1980 or somewhere in 1980, since it's relatively new when it comes to culture, so I don't remember, but when I was emo, I had hair that was pretty much down to my lips, almost to my chin. I uh, dyed my hair black, I always covered one eye. Why? I don't know. It's a phase, and I got out of it right when I had to, like, when I was about 15, 16, 17? No. I got out of it when I was, like, uh, when I turned 17, because I knew this was not going to last, so I just said to myself, fuck me, I'm just going to be me. I'm not going to be in the crowd, because people are dressing like that now. They're dressing like they're from a Tim Burton movie now. It's ridiculous. <sighs> Every time I see one down the street, I'm just, I'm just thinking like, you either A, did it so you can fit in, or B, someone's telling you to do it, or someone's wanting to be like that. Because if you're in a relationship and your boyfriend or girlfriend asks you to be like that, chances are that person does not see you for who you are. They see you as another person they want in their mind. Whatever they think in their mind, they want you to be. Like, if if they don't see you as you, then why are they in them? Because you you pretty much would have to change to stay with them. Because that's not me. If you're going to date me and we're going to be like, I want to be this, I want to be this, I want, I want to be something that you're not. I'm just going to just flip the finger or do something else since I'm not going to waste my time spending money on stuff I don't need that doesn't suit me. And if you're going to pastor me about it, that or pester me about it, fuck my English, I'm just going to be like, Oh, no, 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 no. How about this? You walk the other way, I'll walk this way. Then we got to get along. That's sarcasm, because I, you would never get along if you had to be like that to me. And during those years, I was like, it was from grade 7 to about grade, uh, middle of grade 11, so it was about, uh, let me do the math here, uh, four years at least of that phase. Then I got out of it, realizing it was really stupid. Then I just started eh, being me, which is a metalhead. Well, not really a metalhead anymore. It's more like an all-around music guy. I like I listen to anything that's not irritatingly annoying. So yeah, even country. So you can bark me on me for that. I am a guitarist. I love video games. I love playing guitar. Uh, I like Pepsi. I like Coca-Cola. I am not religious. I'm a realist. And by, I mean, if a realist is someone who would not believe in anything, it, it, it doesn't, if it's not on my, let me just say this, if it's not in front of me, if I don't see it for myself, if I don't see any evidence, I don't think it's real, or I believe it's a myth, hmm, because I'm not going to believe something that isn't right in front of me, because people say, oh god, it's real, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, keep going on, this little my imaginary friend in the sky there. Like, I believe Jesus Christ existed, no doubt, no, no doubt about that, and Virgin Mary, and Joseph, but I don't believe in God and so. Like, the Bible is a man-made book, sorry to tell you this, Christians, but if you ever see a talking snake, let me know. There's so many contradictions, and don't tell, no, don't get me started on the 42 children murdered that was told, that that story was told in the Book of Kings. I would surely not get involved with that. And I'm not really a churchy person. Uh, I used to be a Lutheran, but I was like, I don't want to go to church, so... Mm. And I went to atheist, and then I was like, eh, oh well. I could be an atheist and a realist. Both, I guess. Okay, what else happened? Uh, I started dating when I was about 15, 16? Yeah, this first girl I dated was... I'm not going to mention where she lives or who, who her name was, because... If I mentioned even her where she lived, someone might want to research it up and look up every single Gordon City and ask them, and then I'll be screwed, because then she'll find out that I'm going to be big shit, and I'll have no one to blame. Well, I don't really like to blame on anyone by myself, but if I were to mention it now, I would have to blame myself, because I said it. So this girl was about, mm, about a year older than me, and she was like 5 foot 10. I was, she was like a few inches taller than me back then. I'm like, I'm five foot eight now. I was five foot six or seven back then. Yeah, grown an inch. Yay. That's 
have something to be celebrating about. So, when we started, I was very inexperienced, of course, with dating. So I would not, sh I would not be sure of what I'm supposed to do, how am I supposed to impress a girl, how am I supposed to be a good boyfriend? Because I was an experienced little shit. I did not know how to treat a girl right. So I would either be a really shy, b have my hormones take over, which I don't know why I didn't have control of them back then. But it, it's you know puberty for people who don't know. It's puberty. People go through hormones like all the time. So. Especially in their teen years when they start developing them, the, your hormones go crazy. So pretty much if you see a girl, your like, boners could be like, Phew. That's pretty much what it's like for a male going through puberty. They want to just put their Twinkie Dink in every single thing that has a hole in it. That's kind of like, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my funny side of telling how puberty works. And for girls, it's like, they don't know how about never guys. Well, not only that. I'm not saying every girl in puberty does this, but their hormones are not exactly calm either. And, eh, <laughs> I go on, but I'm pretty sure you get someone yelling at me saying, like, No, 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 no! You run it wrong! That is not puberty! You sick motherfucker! Like, I don't really, <laughs> I don't want to go on with that. But when I was dating this girl, um, uh, my hormones were, like, sky high. Like, if I even see a little nip slip, I'd be like, Eee! I don't know, like now if I saw nip slip, I'd be like, nip slip, I'd be like, hey, you might want to pull your shirt up. I'm not exactly, I'm not, I don't go Eee! when I see a girl like accidentally have her nipple out. I'm just like, hey, maybe you just want to pull your shirt up. You know, to be embarrassed and think I'm a pervert, but I'm like, well, I was telling you, I don't want you to be like not, not noticing your nipples out, and someone's got someone's going to be like. Fantasizing you for the whole night. I really, I'm not like that. So if you're a girl that really doesn't like when a guy noses your like bra is a little too low and your nipple showing, um, and you might want to get your priorities straight because if the guy is trying to help you about this situation and you're rejecting him because he's trying to help you, no, get take the middle finger, leave because I'm not gonna deal with that shit. So this girl I dated was about like, oh. Uh, this is, it was back in 2012. Uh, yeah, no, Doomsday Year. <sighs> I don't believe in that shit. So, when I dated her, it was about a year long at least. And I only saw her once. Most of it was like all over Skype, and it was like really awkward. Like, if I look back at, look back at it now, I'll, I'm, my rules now are like if you're not in the same city as me, if you're not like 16 or up, because I'm 18, so if I date someone that was like 15, I get arrested. You would have to, eh, I don't really care about similar interests as long as you either A, like games, B, like playing music, or C, kind of like the same genre as me or something similar that we guys just listen to without me having a headache. Because if I date someone who's like a Justin Bieber fanatic and keeps blaring Justin Bieber, I'm like, eh, I'm just going to put my headphones in and we'll be having a fun day. Because I really don't want to hear, like, and really annoying shit in my ear. Like, if it's something that's obnoxious, like, most Justin Bieber songs are obnoxious to me, so if you were to blare it in my ear, I would either tell you to screw off and turn that shit off, or put my earbuds in, walk away, because I am not, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit there and have my ears bleed from that stuff. Sorry to hear, sorry to all of you Justin Bieber uh, fangirls, but I'm not gonna deal with that shit. So this girl kind of has similar interests with me, and I only saw her once. And let me tell you, long distance relationships are not exactly good. And it's my personal opinion that they're not exactly real relationships because if you can't really see the person much, that's not really a relationship. That's just you constantly talking to someone online who you have no idea who it is until you actually see them. And even if you see them a few times. How long are you going to keep that up? Because that's going to cost money and gas. Because if you don't have the money, you're going to just end up broke. And you'll never see her again or never see him again. So, I don't know. It's something that's been on my mind. Be like, yeah, on one hand, you can see the person and, well, yes, you get to see them. But on the other hand, you can be broke if you don't have the money or don't have a job to see the person. Because if you have a job, 
and you have the money and have a card and actually visit the person, that's not, that's fine. But if you if you don't drive and you don't have a job and you bug your parents to waste their gas money on you, on that relationship, that's big no-no. It's different if there's like a bus, but you know, who, like, I can see people who take the bus, but that's like, why would you wait that long? And by the time you get to the girl's house, it'll be way too late, probably, and you'd be tired and you'd want to go home. Because the attention span of a teenager nowadays is very, very small. That's just my opinion on it. It's probably not exactly accurate, but, mm. So, when I dated this girl, uh, we had similar interests, and one thing she did that really pissed me off is that she, her father is kind of an alcoholic, I'm not, eh, he drinks beer, and I don't mind that. Like, if you're, if you're drink beer, that's not exactly, like, if you're not drinking it to the point of you getting drunk every day, or every time you drink it, that's fine, like, if you're casual, eh, I don't really care. But... This, like she was way underage, and I, 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 I was on Skype, and I saw her father give her a little sip of his beer. I'm like, okay, like I know, I, if I remember back then, I was kind of overreacting because one sip of it, one sip of a beer, it's not really gonna do much unless your alcohol tolerance is really low, which no one should be unless, unless I feel like a little kid and I can see that. But when I saw her willingly take a sip of the alcohol. Or beer, like I don't really care for beer as long as it's not exactly affecting me or really damaging me or her. Not exactly my problem nowadays, but back then I was really strict on alcohol. Like, if you were dating me and you drank alcohol or did drugs, I'll be like, I would not want to associate with you. Nowadays I don't really care as long as you're not getting me in trouble, as long as you're not giving me the shit because I don't. I'm clean of that stuff. Like, okay, yeah, I did try marijuana once and it was wow it it wasn't good it was like really it made me pale maybe throw up it made me sick but i was told it was laced and that's like real shit but even then i'm not gonna just give up my life and spend money on something that would make me broke and innocent so yeah not gonna do that so when i saw her take that i was just like freaking out and made her cry that was really stupid of me yay make your girlfriend cry very smart and right then and there I was like what is this what is this race I'm going for and then for some reason um, I was not really paying attention to her because she kept bugging me 24 7 which even now if you're bugging me 24 7 enough shit I'm not going to listen to you because you're gonna be annoying me so I ignored her for a little while because she pissed me off and she kept annoying me but I'm just hearing the same Skype sounds like beep, 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 beep. every single time she tried to talk to me like uh, uh, no I don't want to then she created a lie saying that she did drugs like acid or oil what the fuck is that? is oil even a drug like a nickname for it I don't know but she said she did that I reacted screamed at her and then I was like fuck this shit if you're not if you got pulled this shit on me we're done so pretty much, I called it quits, we called it quits, and that uh, was the end of it that. Now the, okay, I had a few day experiences, but one of them wasn't so bad, because I realized I was a bit of a jack off in there, but this next one, oh my, this happened, this was, this was pretty recent too. This was about like, oh, 2014 at least? Yeah, it was like, beginning of 2014. It was about February, and there was this girl who would always hang with me at school, get close to me. Like she was dating uh, one of my good friends at the time, but yeah, she kept staring at me because apparently we had a good connection, or so I was a better fit for her. And then when she, her parents wanted her to be getting away from my good friend, who was about 18, at, how, how old is he? Uh, he was about, well, I don't remember, but when she was dating him, she kept staring at me, and when she was forced to get away from him, she kept clinging on to me. I just decided to ask if we wanted to go on a date, and we did. And I was about few years older than her, and that's a big red sign. I don't know why I did that. Like, my rule nowadays is if you had to be 16 or up for me to even think about dating you, because, again, I'd be arrested if it was anything else. 
So it was going pretty well for the most part and we hung out a lot, she kept playing on me. My hormones were still going crazy for some reason. Both of our hormones were like rabbiting and it was really stupid of me to even think about doing anything with her, but no, I'm still a virgin, I didn't do anything with her, but you know, hormones go crazy. So things were going well until it was about uh, it was a, it was a uh, school play. I was I was I offered to help with her for the school play, and it was going way past her time to be home. She never called her parents to say like, "Oh yeah, I'll be overstaying for a little bit." So and for some reason I didn't do it either. I was like, I, I had my iPod with me. Like I had an iPod talked at the time, so I can easily text someone or call someone like saying like, "Oh, I'm not gonna be here because I have to help with the play." I never even said anything. I was like. Oh, what? I was like, like if I if I called someone or called my mother or called them, I probably will, this probably would never happen. But uh, by the time the play was over, uh, I was walking. She, uh, we walked together at night. Like it's like nine something. We got to my house. She walked me to my house because she wanted me to be safe. Even though I need to take care of myself. Plus, my area is far from violence so I don't know why she offered but mm. so when we when we got to my house um, my father called her parents they came screeching over here yelled at me and her I'll say her because of her decisions because she's a skinny she's a skinny girl and uh, 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 all these girls uh, all these guys out there are just gonna scoop you up and take you for the night I'm like this place isn't that bad and he, he's like I don't care I don't care I don't care like screaming at me I'm like well no I'm, I'm he didn't say that to me but I can tell like he would just been like screaming at me if I said anything so I just stayed quiet for the most part explaining my situation and pretty much it was pretty much done from that point on but even after he told us to be apart she constantly still clung on to me we had a bunch of fights after that we always fall with each other. I she apparently said it changed, even though I'm like, no, I'm just a little bit depressed a little bit because of the whole yelling thing. I hate being yelled at. It's something I don't really like. Like I don't like to be the person who's being yelled at, unless if I've done something just really stupid. Because, well, okay, that was pretty stupid for me to not to tell her to say like, hey, maybe she call your parents. Like, no, 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 no. It was really stupid of me back then. Even though I'm 18 now, it's only been a year since it happened. So. <laughs> I'm already self-evaluating that. So pretty much it was going all the way downhill and then at one point there was another sort of play and when um, we were supposed to help but apparently they didn't need help so for the whole time both of our parents thought oh we're having we're just gonna work on it but we just ran around we had we another one of our friends came along we played some games like in the hallways it was it was fun but it was really stupid but then I was told his, her father would get a piece on me or a straining order even though it wasn't really that major but uh, he overreacts because she's young and he thinks every guy is out to get her which I'm not gonna lie some guys are like that but for the most part in my area, like I said, it's very rare for someone to be picked up and taken away. Unless if you're like in downtown at midnight, then yeah, you're going to be, something's going to happen. That's pretty much every city though. So when she told me that and everyone is going home, for some reason, we stayed until the time that was up. Her father comes down the hallway of school, yells at me yet again, threatens me, threatens to do something to me, takes her away and like... Apparently there was a fight with them, and then, I don't know. It was just really, really, wow. Never expected this. So I whipped up my phone, called my mother. She picked me up. I was gone. She was like, "I told you so." That um, her father would do something. Was like, I said, or she's like, she's pulling her leg, man. And I'm like, that's probably true. And even after the fact that happened, they she still fought with me. Like, I didn't want to be in a relationship anymore. But she kept fighting with me. She kept verbally abusing me. So I was trying to distance myself from her. But she always kept charging at me. Like, <laughs> like 
there were there were so many office appointments. It was ridiculous when I was when she was in the school with me. Like almost, oh, not top of my head, how many old times it was, but like close to ten. Nowadays, I'm rarely in the office unless if I'm telling my mother to pick me up or some shit like that. Like I'm rarely in the office now, but back then I was like in the office 24/7. It was really ridiculous, and my my vice principal was getting tired of this, and I'm like, I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you. So until the time when uh, summer break was around, she was kept bothering me, and right when we were about summer break was about to happen, uh, she she always kept running at me, getting me in trouble. I was talking to a friend about my situation. She kept she's like, what was that? What was that? It's like, she was coming at me, he's like, mm, I'm innocent. <laughs> Pretty much, I'm just talking to my friend, like, what's the problem with that? So, and then we get sent to the office, yet again. Her father comes in, pretty much calling it punk, and all that crap, yada yada yada. And long story short, she got removed from the school. Now, we're not saying where she is, and I know exactly where she is, but I'm not gonna bother with it. And if I were to change anything from that point on, I would be like, a, I would just either be good friends with her and not really have anything wrong. B, actually think before I even think about asking someone out that's younger. I know it's younger than me. Even younger than the age of consent, which is pretty stupid. And when I came to, I see myself dating someone younger than 16. That's, that's dumb in my eyes. Like, I, I only date people nowadays who are 16 and up. But when I'm like 5 years plus of the 16 year of age, I'm gonna like only ask for adults. I'm not gonna go through that again. It was hell. Like, here's a tip for you guys. I think that that one girl who you think is awesome, who you think you want to date, but she's under age and you want to date her girl, don't, because that's gonna end badly for you. Like, it's different for everyone, but nine times out of ten, it's going something's gonna go wrong. So it's pretty much my self evaluating from then till now. Now, if I were to do anything, I'm still trying to find a job, I'm still trying to, you know, get myself stable with some money and finances, I'm still learning how to play guitar, even though I'm, I have five or six years experience, still learning, and you don't, the only time you don't learn is when you die. So pretty much, from the major experiences till now, I would say most of it changed me, like even the whole dating experience changed me, the whole nightmare I had, I just said to you, I just explained in this video, like, it changed me saying like, yeah, yeah, don't do that. Make sure you look. Make sure you actually respect someone. Make sure you actually speak up. Because if you don't speak up, something's going to happen. And when that does happen, eh, it's going to go down. So this is just my video of me saying myself. I'm just self evaluating myself, and I know I've fallen on my words multiple, multiple times. But for the most part, I believe you can hear me for the most part. And if you don't, if you can't, then. Uh, I don't know what I can say since I, I'm not gonna be someone who's gonna clarify what I say to people. Like, if you're going to just whine and complain that you can't hear what I'm saying, then I'm just gonna be like, mm, I'm not gonna sit here and be a translator for you. If you can't hear me. It's too bad. I'm not gonna translate myself to you. I'm just gonna be myself. So that's pretty much the whole video. Yeah, it's pretty much going through my whole life, the major experiences anyway. Technically, it's sort of like a draw of my life, but, you know, I can't draw up shit, and I I don't have the time or, nor patience to even try, so I decided just to whip up my microphone, record some gameplay, and talk over right about my life experiences and what you can do, or what I can do, to be a better person, because if you've experienced the similar things, like, mostly with the dating experiences, since the other things like NLPs, I don't think you would be relating to that. But if you're dating, then I would say, like, just speak up when things go wrong. Make sure you're a nice girl. Make sure you respect her. Make sure she does not, like, if she does anything that is really making you mad, I would say either A, end relationship, or B, confront her, because, or confront him if you're, I don't know. But, hmm, this is just a whole video of me, so if I don't myself. See you guys later, and I hope you guys have a nice day.